101 teams to go in my road to predict all 131 teams this college football off season. Moving on now to the West Virginia Mountaineers, a team that uh, has kind of been up and down, up and down for the past couple of years. Last year, pretty solid year for West Virginia. Um, but this is a team and a fan base that maybe wants a little bit more from this West Virginia program. So can the Mountaineers provide a little bit more uh, they got some pretty good players coming in through the portal, through their re recruiting class as well. Um, and overall, I think there's a lot of belief in this West Virginia team this year. Uh, however, bringing back some non-conference rivalry games this year as well. So, can West Virginia um, give people or give people um, in Morgantown and kind of take that next step? Or will West Virginia um, maybe take a step back in 2022? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. And welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 131 teams this college football offseason, which means I'm doing your favorite teams. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, so you're notified when your favorite team gets uploaded. Um, and to West Virginia fans out there, you guys are going to know this team a lot better than me. So if you want to add something, feel like you got something wrong, whatever have you, uh, leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll be happy to read through them. West Virginia 2022. Let's get into it. They are my eighth ranked team in the Big 12 coming into the 2022 college football season. And um, it was a pretty solid team overall last year. They were 6-7, and seven, made a bowl game, ended up losing to Minnesota in that bowl game, uh, and was 4-5 and five in the Big 12. So uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Pretty solid season for w West Virginia. A couple stats last year. Their offense... You'd like to see it get better, right? 371 yards and 30, or excuse me, 25 points per game. Well, on the defensive side, uh, 350 yards and 24 points allowed. So their defense, pretty, pretty good last year. You want to see those offensive numbers get better if you are a West Virginia fan. So um, taking a look at some of the talent that is leaving and coming in under Neil Brown, um, they, you are losing your starting quarterback, Jarrett Deggie. Uh, and Deggie had 3,048 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions last year. So definitely threw too many interceptions last year that did uh, Jarrett Deggie. Um, but hey, that is still a very, he was a pretty solid option at the quarterback position for uh, West Virginia. They're going to have to find a new guy to come in and replace him. You also lose 1,000 yard rusher Letty Brown, 1,065 yards. Uh, 13 touchdowns for him last year. One of the best running backs in the country. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now gone off this team as well. Uh, you're also losing your lead target, Winston Wright. Had 688 yards, five touchdowns for you last year. Sean Ryan, Isaiah Esdale are also some guys that are gone and off that team as well. When you look at the defensive side of the ball, uh, your sack leader, Oh, excuse me. One of your sack leaders last year, Akeem Mezador, had four and a half sacks with 38 tackles last year. He's gone off the team. And when you look around, Josh Chandler, Semedo, uh, Sean Mahone, uh, who was your second leading tackler last year, Alonzo Aday, who had 73 tackles last year, was your third leading tackler, uh, Daryl Porter, who was your fourth leading tackler, Jackie Matthews, who was your fifth leading tackler. So losing a lot of tacklers out of this defensive uh, backfield and all of them were capable of were capable of defending passes, picking balls off and everything like that. So um, this is the West Virginia team that definitely loses um, some pretty solid talent on the defensive end, especially considering how good that defense was last year. A couple guys are going to have to step it up for West Virginia in 2022. But you know what? While those offensive numbers, you'd like to see them get better, they brought in some talent that can absolutely do that. Quarterback JT Daniels, who's never really gotten it going in his college career yet, was a very highly talented prospect out of USC, then went to Georgia, where, again, it just never really worked out, and now is going to be here trying to prove himself at a West Virginia program that is looking for a quarterback spot. So JT Daniels, going to slot in there, I would think, to be the starting quarterback, although Jarrett Green is there as well. Or not Jarrett, Garrett Green. Excuse me, Garrett Green is there as well to try to compete for that starting quarterback spot. I would think it, it's uh, Daniels' job, though. I would absolutely think JT Daniels gets that start. Uh, you return Tony Mathis, your second leading rusher last year. Uh, and 
You also get Lee, uh, Lynn J. Dixon over from Clemson, so that's a good pickup in the transfer portal there to boost uh, the run game. But you also have a lot of wide receivers coming back, and this, I think, is going to help JT Daniels as the experience at wide receiver. Bryce Ford Wheaton, uh, Sam James, Caden uh, Prathel, Reese Smith. A couple guys there that are coming back for this team. Bryce Ford Wheaton, of course, is the big name there on that board. When you look at the defensive end, your sack leader from a season ago, Dante Stills, is coming back. Um, you, you also return Paj Alston, who had five sacks. I believe that was second on the team last year. Um, your leading tackler coming back is that linebacker, x Low, Lowe. Only 38 tackles, so um, while you're losing your top five tacklers from last season, uh, x Low, Lowe, guy that can definitely provide some tackles for this team, as can Lance Dixon. Uh, he's another guy there that I really like. Uh, Lee Capagla is a transfer coming in. Uh, you got uh, Marcus Floyd, who's a transfer. Charles Woods uh, coming back. And then Hershey McLaurin is one of the more highly touted Juco prospects out there. And he's coming over to play for West Virginia as well. So this is definitely a team that has got some talent um, overall. In my opinion, it's pretty similar to the team that was here last year, though. Uh, and we'll see if they can take it a step up in 2022 a look at the schedule now for west virginia and man a couple rivalry games back on the schedule for non-conference first off you play towson should be able to get the win there but two games on the road pitt and virginia tech both of them going to be going to play on the road there um both of them i believe on thursday night games as well so uh, man, the backyard brawl coming back there against Pitt. Of course, you have the rivalry game with Virginia Tech there as well. Um, this is going to be an exciting non-conference schedule for West Virginia, but it can also define whether or not this West Virginia team is going to be bowl eligible or not. Because going on the road, uh, Virginia Tech, while they might not project to be that great, Blacksburg is still one of the toughest places to play in the country. And Pitt, they're going to have the fans behind them. And that's a team that, yeah, they don't have Kenny Pickett. They don't have Jordan Addison. But that's still going to be a talented football team in 2022. When you look at the Big 12 schedule, home games against Kansas, Baylor, TCU, Oklahoma, and Kansas State. And you got to go on the road to play Texas, Texas Tech, Iowa State, and Oklahoma State. So diving into the games a little bit. Again, I think Pitt is still going to be a very, very talented team. They still got, or, again, and while you don't have Kenny Pickett or Jordan Addison, you bring in Keaton Slovis from the transfer portal from USC to kind of be that guy there as well. Um, and it's two former USC quarterbacks who at one point were on the same team that are going to be battling each other out in the backyard brawl in week one. I'm very, very excited for that game. Um, Kansas, uh, of course, this is probably going to be one of the most, uh, or one of the most talented teams that Kansas has had in recent memory. Um, however, I do see West Virginia being able to win that one. Towson pretty easy on the road at Blacksburg. I think West Virginia is the better team than Virginia Tech, but that's a tough place to play. Never count out Virginia Tech in their home stadium. Um, and then when you get into more uh, Big 12 play here, um, there are definitely some games that you have at home that they can pull off an upset with. Uh, Baylor, definitely a game they can pull off an upset in. Oklahoma, depending on what the Sooners do this year. That could be an upset game, but they could also go on the road and pull off some big ones as well. You got on the road against Texas, uh, on the road against Oklahoma State there as well. And I'd watch out for on the road against Texas Tech. That's a team with a new head coach, new offensive system coming in. And while I think maybe it might give them a year to get figured out, if they get it figured out right away, that's a scary team in Texas Tech. I don't do game-by-game -game predictions. I do a more percentage-based outlook to help me predict a team's record. So if the game's in red, I don't see you winning the game. If the game is in orange, I still probably don't see you winning the game, but it is college football and upsets can happen. If the game is in yellow green, that's kind of your 50, 50 upset, or, or excuse me, if the game is in yellow, that's your 50, 50 upset potential games right there. Games in yellow green or games where again, you should win, but watch out for the team on the other side of the ball and games in green are games. You should probably win. So Towson, of course, in green should have no problem there. And Kansas, I have in yellow green. Again, I don't think Kansas is going to be a pushover by any means for any team this year. Again, they beat Texas last year. Now, that's a team that's much improved in Texas this year. But still, beat Texas last year. Almost beat Oklahoma. They were close to the wire in a lot of games there as well. So watch out for the Kansas team. Although I am leading West Virginia, the game is in Morgantown at home for the Mountaineers. Again, I've already talked about their non-conference schedule. That's a really, really hard couple of uh, road games there. And um, it wouldn't surprise 
surprise me to see West Virginia lose both of them. However, I think they're going to win one on the road. I do think they're going to win one of them on the road. And based on my percentages, the most likely one to do that is on the road against Virginia Tech. Uh, I think Pitt is definitely going to be more talented than West Virginia. But I think West Virginia is going to be more talented than Virginia Tech. So um, definitely watch those two games there. I think they're both going to be phenomenal games. But I think West Virginia wins one of the two games in non-conference. When you get into conference play, I got games in orange against Texas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Those are going to be three very, very good football teams in 2022. Um, and West Virginia, I think, is going to have a tough time trying to beat either of them. They might even have a tough time beating Baylor because Baylor, I think, is also going to have a really, really good football team. Um, and that's a Baylor team that, while I don't think they're going to be as good as last year, coming in to uh, Morgantown on a Friday night, uh, West Virginia is coming off uh, the bye week after a tough road game against Texas. They're going to want to get back in the win column saying they lose that Texas game, which is what I am uh, projecting. Baylor's got to watch out. Uh, for that game against West Virginia. Again, games in yellow as well against Texas Tech, TCU, Iowa State, Kansas State. Um, going on the road to play Texas Tech and Iowa State, again, could be a little tricky, but when you get TCU and Kansas State at home, two teams that, again, I haven't done yet, which means they're above West Virginia in my power rankings, definitely going to be two um, interesting games to watch. And I think West Virginia, honestly, this West Virginia team, I could see doing one of two things. A, I think West Virginia is making a bowl game, period. So I have West Virginia going 6-6 six and six, um, and kind of replicating what they did last year. I, I think they'll lose a non-conference game at some point and then go 4-5 and five in conference and make a, a bowl game. When looking at this roster, um, the only thing that I think is holding West Virginia back from maybe a little bit more is... How well does JT Daniels play? There is no doubt that the talent has always been there for JT Daniels. It's just never really showed out and never really showed out in person. So, um, yeah. So if West Virginia is going to want to be able to try to take that next step in 2022, JT Daniels has definitely got to start getting it going and start finding a rhythm in a Mountaineer uniform. But otherwise, you have good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Definitely have good defensive playmakers on the side of the ball as well. I mean, Dante Stills, Lance Dixon, Marcus Floyd, etc., etc. Um, this is definitely going to be a pretty talented football team in 2022, um, and we'll see what they do. But I have you guys going six and six. That floor is four and eight. Again, if things just don't work out, maybe they miss out on a bowl game. But I think that's being a little pessimistic. I think five and seven is a more uh, reasonable floor. While eight and four, I could seize the high for this team again if JT Daniels can find it. This team can get rolling and they can be really scary in Big 12 play. So that's going to be my predictions for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Be sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, everything like that. Remember to play hard but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.